Now what I find really cool about Unity is that we can create these small reusable scripts and then add them to different game components to create different combinations of behavior. So for example, we can use our waypoint follower script that we created for our moving platform, but add it to a trap to get a trap that moves in our game world, but can still kill the player. So let's do it this in this part. So back in Unity, let's add a new trap to our traps folder here. So we right click on traps, create a 2D object, sprites square, and let's call it Zar. And we can find the images for this under assets, pixel adventure, assets, traps. And here we have the Zar folder with a single sprite and an animation. Now the animation depicts a rotation movement, but we actually don't need this. We can also just use the normal saw image and rotate the image through a C sharp script, which in my opinion looks even cooler. So we will only use this image here. And first of all, of course, we have to change the pixels per unit value to 16. And then we want to drag this image into the saw sprite here. So we drag and drop this into the sprite tab of the ZAR game object. And what I want to do is I want to have the ZAR move from left to right near the bottom. So let's remove these two spikes with the delete button. Then we move this ZAR here behind the ground. And again, the sorting layer is set to default. So it's behind the terrain, which looks cool in my opinion. And then we want to move it back and forth between two waypoints. So first of all, let's create a game object as a folder for it. So again, we right click on traps, create empty. Let's call it ZAR1, which is a great movie by the way. And drag and drop this ZAR object under ZAR1, where we will now also put our waypoints. So we right click on ZAR1, create an empty game object. Let's call it waypoint1. Set a preview image here to this little graphic and then duplicate it with Ctrl D and rename it to a waypoint 2. Then we give these two waypoints the same height as our ZAR. So we select the ZAR, copy this Y value, select both waypoints with Shift, paste it in here, and now they have the same height as the ZAR itself. Then we move waypoint 1 over here under the first cherry, but of course you can build your world however you want. And here under the second cherry. And luckily the waypoint following logic is already set up. We did this in the last video, so we select our ZAR and add our waypoint follower script. Where we add two elements to our array and drag our waypoints into these slots of the array. And now the ZAR should move between these two waypoints when we start our game. So let's test it. And this already works. Of course, we don't have rotation yet, and we also don't have a collider on the ZAR yet. We will take care of this next. To rotate our ZAR, we will create a tiny script. And again, we can reuse this script later on other game objects if we want them to rotate as well. So when we have the ZAR selected, we click Add Component to create a new script. We call it rotate, click on new script, create and add. But as usual, when we create a script like this, it's in the root assets folder. So we drag and drop this into scripts. And then we open the script in Visual Studio. So I double click it, rotate, and then we set this up. We don't need start here, only update. As usual, I delete this comment and make update private. Again, it's good to be able to change the speed of the rotation in the editor. So we create a serialized field for that, which is a private float that we call speed. And this value will define how many times we uh, rotate the image by 360 degrees per second. So two times 360 is 720. So two full rotations of the image per second. Just play around with this until you have the speed that you like. 
and we rotate the image in update the following way. We write transform.rotate, which is a method, and then we have to pass three arguments, how much we want to rotate the image in the x, y, and z direction. So to see how this looks, let's take a look into Unity again. We select the czar, and here we go to rotation, not position, but rotation. So x would mean we uh, rotate it like this, which we don't want. Y means we rotate it like this, which we also don't want. We only want to rotate it on the Z value, which gives it this czar like rotation movement. So back into uh, our script. For X we pass zero, so we don't rotate it around the X axis. The same for Y. And for Z, we want to rotate it by 360 degrees times our speed value, times, maybe you can already guess it, time dot delta time. Because again, we execute update in every frame and with time dot delta time, we make our values here frame rate independent and instead we rotate the image by 360 times speed per second. So let's hit Control S to save this, go back into Unity and see if our ZAR rotates. And this looks like a rotation to me. Looks really cool. Now let's add the box collider so you can actually die when we touch it. So we select the czar, add component box collider 2D. We change the boundaries a little bit. I'm gonna drag it in a little bit so we don't die as soon as we touch the very outside. But I don't wanna go too far either. I'm gonna hide the terrain for a moment to see the full czar. And let's actually put it like this. It's a bit too small in my opinion. Okay. But we have already set up the whole dev logic. So all we have to do to make this a trap is to attack the czar as trap. And the same as for our spikes, as soon as we touch a trap, the player will die. And I'm gonna make the terrain visible again. So let's run it and see if this works. And this time we have we had to do a lot less stuff than we had to do in the past because we have already set up everything. We have already set up the waypoint follower earlier and the whole trap logic. So now when we touch it, we die and our game restarts a moment later. Looks really cool in my opinion. Boom. And now I actually want to add two more of these czars just to make the game world a bit more interesting. But first of all, we will make the czar a prefab. So assets, and we drag in the czar here into the prefabs folder. And the name turns blue as usual. What I want to do is I want to draw this piece here, but vertically and put a czar on it to uh, make it look like the czar is moving on the stick. Now, of course, we don't want to hide the background when we draw this, but it's also not terrain because we collide with terrain and we want to be able to uh, walk by it. So what we need is a third tile map. So we right click on our grid here again, where we already have our terrain and background tile maps. Create a new uh, 2D object, tile map rectangular, and I'm going to call it over background. Then I select the inspector while over background is still selected. And we could add a new sorting layer for this, but I'm actually gonna use background and then set order and layer to one. But again, how you wanna organize this depends on your personal preference. So now I click on tile palette, select over background, and we can draw it into the background over our background image, but we will be able to walk in front of these sticks. And we can actually rotate these tiles here before we draw them. So I have this whole stick selected and how you rotate them depends on your keyboard. I think on an American keyboard, it's the closing and opening square bracket keys. On my German keyboard, it's the SZ button, which is a kind of German letter and the button next to it with the, I think it's apostrophe. But again, on an Amer American keyboard, it should be the square brackets keys. If you can't figure it out, 
just Google it because it's described somewhere. So I rotate this and I put two of these sticks somewhere here, like this. And then I wanna put two czars on these sticks. And by the way, you don't have to add these sticks at all if you don't want to. You can also just have the source hanging in the air. It's just for the looks. So next I'm gonna duplicate this whole ZAR1 together with the two waypoints. Gonna rename it to ZAR2. And then I move the ZAR2 over here. Place it how I like it. Maybe like this. And then of course I have to move the two waypoints. So waypoint one should be up here and waypoint two down here. And the cool thing about our waypoint script is that it doesn't matter if these waypoints are aligned horizontally or vertically, the ZAR will just move from one to the other. But to have a straight movement, I wanna have the same X position for both of them. So I, I align this properly, copy this value and set it on the second waypoint like this. Then I'm gonna duplicate the ZAR2 again, rename it to ZAR3 and then I move it over while hold holding control down to get this very exact positioning. So this is a very cool game mechanic in my opinion. So let's run it again and try it out. So I'm gonna run over there with our cool moving platform. This is already easily the best game in the world in my opinion and here we have our two cool czars. And when we touch them, of course we die. Nice. But of course we can also use our czars completely without waypoints. So they just rotate in place. So let's actually do this with the first uh, Let's just remove these two waypoints and also remove the whole waypoint follower script. So right click, remove component, and we don't need this folder anymore so we can drag it outside and delete ZAR1. And now when we run this, the ZAR will just rotate in place. And of course it's really difficult to get this cherry here, but it's possible. But let's actually uh, move it a bit higher. And since our collectibles are all nested in this object here, we can take this whole collectibles object and move it up. This is better. Of course, you can keep these waypoints in, you can build this world in any way you want. Do you wanna hear a funny story? The level we just built with the czars and the spikes, I actually posted a preview of this level as a story on YouTube and YouTube made this story age restricted, so you can only watch it if you are 18 or older, <laughs> because it's too violent, it's too brutal. I agree, it's a very hardcore game, but there is one important piece that's still missing and that's the sound effects. At the moment our game is completely quiet and what's a game without sound effects? So definitely make sure to watch the next part, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and take care.